Hey guys and welcome to this video. Today we'll talk about the Q1 2022 earnings of LVMH. They've been outstanding and the share reacted with a plus of over 4% as we can see here. And let's go straight ahead. I got no clue who this lady is. She looks familiar but I don't know her. An excellent start to 2023 and that's really what we can call it. 17% organic revenue growth. I think guys that is outstanding. And the lovely thing is every single category had double digit growth except wines and spirits and we have very very strong momentum and growth in Europe and Japan a bit softer in the US but also Asia so China in other words is really improving as we can see here it's only organic revenue growth, no currency, no nothing else. In total, it's $21 billion in revenue, very, very solid. Here we can see the percentage of the total revenue of each category. And what I personally quite love about LVMH is it is pretty much divided between different areas all through Asia, excluding Japan. So mainly China really is a very dominant player i can't tell you the exact number of percent percentage number of revenue that comes from china but is a large number but i don't see such a big problem in it because europe for example let's say friends and the rest of europe together are already 21 percent and the united states is 23 percent so it is quite evenly divided between the world here we can see the revenue overall it's a 17 percent revenue growth which i think is amazing let's go on with the business group reviews by the way i'll always keep those pictures in i normally delete them but i i, I personally find lvm's where they good in like marketing and picture stuff i like it wine and spirits so we've got a three percent organic revenue growth not that much wine and spirits is mainly for example dom perignon crook i'm not sure whether you pronounce it that way moet chardon but on the other side, we got cognac, so Hennessy um, spirits, I assume, is stuff like Belvedere Vodka and Glen Morgie, Glen Mortgage, whatever you call it. Uh, spirits, minus 5%. Well, that's the way it is. You can't always grow. But here, Champagne and Wayne's, we see that 14% growth. Very, very lovely. And by the way, we can see that here, the cognac and spirits contributes more to the total wine and spirits revenue than champagne and wines. So that's the reason why I assume it's only 3% growth. Let's go on fashion and leather goods, by far the most important area. 18% organic revenue growth, now over 10 billion in just one quarter. That is solid, guys. Currency effects minus 1%. I can't tell why we have currency effects here and not, for example, wine and spirits, but who knows? Their, their main brands like Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, and all the other ones, well, they look as if they really do what they shall do, which is selling pricey goods to people who have the money to spend it, make me as a shareholder more wealthy. Love it. Love it. Perfumes and cosmetics. I got no clue. I, I, it's like the thing with those women. I do think I know them, but I, don't, I can't name them. So perfume and cosmetics grew 10% to now 2 billion. It's totally fine. We got plus 1% due to currency effects here. Earlier we had one, minus 1%. God knows why. The issue with perfume and cosmetics, check out my video I made about Estee there. I think Estee there would be amazing match for LVMH. So um, acquisition target of Estee there is quite uh, expensive company. I mean, market cap wise, not necessarily PE ratio wise. So I don't know whether they will buy it, but since perfume and cosmetics contributes 2 billion, so just 20% of, for example, leather goods and perfume and cosmetics, in my opinion, is a very appealing market, especially in the luxury area, might be an idea to acquire them. And here we got the different beauty brands, perfumes, Christian Dior. I only know that Johnny Depp made advertising for them once, and I know that Arco di Parma is next level expensive. Watch and jewelries. Definitely don't know here. Uh, here we can see another 11% revenue growth. So we see growth where we go. Uh, now to 2.5 billion, which is rather lovely. And the main issue here is Tiffany. So they bought Tiffany 
was it last year or in 2021 can't really tell but now they have it and tiffany is such a well-known brand and i'm happy they bought it uh, they are reopening their new york city fifth avenue landmark so the one that we all know from breakfast at tiffany's and they do that in q2 2023 which makes me a bit sad because i would love would love that to happen last year when i was in new york because then i would have gone there probably made a video about it but overall we see momentum and we see growth in watches and jewelry which i think is nice there is the rumor that they might buy richemont i hope i pronounce it properly it's a swiss company is it i might be it has a market cap of i think 80 90 billion something like that so always also quite pricey uh let's see whether that will happen one day or not or would be amazing match for lvmh as still there would selective retailing here we got the biggest growth with 28 percent and two percent currency well no surprise because well where do they have them lots of their stores are for example at airports and now people can travel again so that's the reason why we see that massive growth here and that's been it that is the numbers that these are the numbers of lvmh q1 2023 amazing let's just have a quick look at the chart and then conclude is the chart now and we can see we had that lovely pop here and i would not be surprised if that will con if we see a continuous upwards trend after these um very very solid numbers i i assume we see it might see a little bounce back because that often happens after these days but we can see we had a very strong performance into the closing otherwise we would have seen that little thing we see here also in the top uh, what we can do is we can go, go on an hourly chart and just we can see strong into the closing something I love to see <clears throat> let's go back to daily and this is the daily one i mean it just stands for itself i mean what we had something similar to here here we had that little pop and then the solid upward movement yeah daily one's good also i mean monthly not more to say left bone corner Upper right corner to conclude, in my opinion, is a solid buy. Definitely a buy. With that said, see you soon, guys. Bye. <clears throat>